This is a presentation about making managers better leaders by giving leadership a campaigning twist. So recently, a chief executive vacancy for a national charity caught my eye. But, but intriguingly, there was a jarring contrast between the advert and the information pack. The advert spoke about looking for an inspiring leader, and yet the person's specification in the job pack only mentioned the importance of certain management competencies. So what were they really looking for? Was it a leader or a manager? And it was fairly clear to me that despite the lofty leadership rhetoric, they were going to recruit a manager. And what we've seen in recent years across the voluntary sector is a, is a welcome increase in focus on management skills, you know, by which I mean things like human resources, budgeting and strategic planning. But, but resulting in a possible consequence of us getting highly competent managers, but these people struggling to inspire their staff, their supporters, and indeed the wider public. And so we have this kind of perennial debate almost about managers and leaders. You know, what's the difference between a manager and a leader? And certainly when I remember back to when I was on what is now the NHS management training scheme, this was one of the conversations, one of the debates that we were encouraged to have, the difference between a manager and a leader. And this issue is sometimes compounded by the fact that these terms can be used interchangeably. I was taken recently looking at the NCVO, that's the National Council for Voluntary Organisations, their website, and they got a really interesting article where they actually put out, in the context of the voluntary sector, the difference between managers and leaders. So NCVO suggests that when you look at managers, they're about planning, they're about systems. They're very much focused on improving today. They're generally risk averse. They're all about doing, getting things done. They're driven by their head and they're about controlling things. And then in contrast, looking at leaders, they argue that leaders are about vision. They're about innovation. Focus not so much on today, but shaping tomorrow. They're more of a risk taker. And compared to managers be doing, leaders are very much about being. They're driven by their heart. And while managers might seek to control, a leader will seek to liberate. So how can you make managers better leaders? So my, my argument, based on my experience, is that you can do that by adding a campaigning twist to enhance effective leadership. Now, now I should be quite clear, quite clear at this point, that what I'm not saying is that all leaders should become campaigners. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying, what I am saying, is that I think that campaigning skills can help them to become more visionary and inspirational leaders. And you can do that by adding a campaigning twist. So in stage one, you've got a competent manager. You can then give them in stage two, what I would call a campaigning twist. And then you then see them becoming more of an effective leader. And so the cycle continues. So what is this campaigning twist for leaders. So essentially what I think it's about is what I would call basic campaigning skills, but really encouraging leaders to be thinking about their application for them in their working lives. So these are a number of skills. So the first one is the value and valuing the central importance of your collective mission. Such an important element, linking all your activity to your collective mission and how it will help you to achieve your mission. Another one, conveying the purpose of your organisation in a very simple and clear way, your elevator pitch of your problem and your solution. Essentially being able to distill, to articulate, why do you do what you do? The importance of living your shared values, not just using them as words, but actually living them every day and communicating what you are doing. The ability, the ability to tell a compelling story. This is your theory of change or your future story. 
being able to say really clearly, where have we come from? Where are we now? And where are we going? And I also think it's so important to be able to describe what success looks like. What does the world actually look like when you've achieved your goal? How does it look and feel different? The companion twist also includes being curious and seeking to understand where power is and where power should be. So understanding the real power dynamics, inviting challenge. I think that's so important. Inviting, being open to be challenged and explicitly setting out where power should be. Valuing the richness of lived experience. Now, there's a lot of talk in the voluntary sector at the moment around lived experience, which is very welcome. But it's so important that a leader is showing the equal importance of both lived experience alongside professional knowledge and skills. It's not either or, it's valuing both equally. Being interested in and able to respond to opposition messages. So being open to the arguments against your position. This is so important. And then being willing to use this opposition to strengthen the effectiveness of your own message. Also, the importance of building new and surprising allies. Being open to building new allies, especially when they're not just the usual suspects to help you broad, broader support in civil society for the change that you want to see. And then finally, the importance of building a learning culture. How to embrace success and failure. You know, that essentially encouraging people to try things, embracing failure and not penalizing it, but seeking always to learn and to be stronger as a result. So this is the new concept that I'm developing around this campaigning twist. If these ideas have struck any interest in you and you'd like to explore them more, do please get in touch. And thanks for your time.